I stumble around is what I do. I'm stumbling around. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I gotta do this. Yay, okay. I'm only, you know, 10 minutes in. That's okay. That's just the way it goes. Because I'm still learning how to do all this technological stuff. And it hurts my brain. It really does. All right, let's see. Should I make this smaller? See, it just doesn't look the same. I like it better, bigger. I think I'd rather see the geese than myself. What do you guys think? Yeah. Okay, we're going to play. We're playing today. It's cold and it's rainy and I'm in northern Ohio and it's still trying to snow on us. And we're stuck inside, although I went out earlier and picked up a prescription drive through and picked up an order from a certain restaurant, which I probably shouldn't name because I'm going to stop ordering curbside to go. But I love their fish. They got really good fish. But every time I do the curbside thing, either my order gets messed up or it takes forever for them to come out and even acknowledge that you're there, let alone bring you your food. <sighs> and I had my doggy Sahara in the car with me. She was hilarious. Yesterday, I had to go out and get something. I forget what it was. But I knew I was going to do this. And so I let her outside to do her business. And she's way in the back of the yard. And I come outside with my coat on and I'm holding her leash. And I go, want to go for a ride? I haven't seen her move that fast in a long time. She she was like a horse galloping from the back end of the, of the yard up to where I was. It was funny. It was really funny. Yeah, yeah, she wanted to go for a ride. So uh, anytime she knows that she's going, she, she loves it. She, she spazzes. And it's like I'm trying to teach her to react calmly, be enthusiastic, yes, but react calmly. Uh, so I, I, she'd already been out when I decided to do this today. So um, she knew I was getting ready to leave. And when your uh, companions know you're getting ready to leave, they sink and they sulk. Uh, <sighs> that's that's the reaction I, I get with mine. Um, so she was getting ready to do that, but then I said, you want to go for a ride? Zoom! She's at the back door. So anyway, I had her with me today. And if I hadn't have, I would have gotten out of the car and gone in and go, hey, what's the holdup? Or I would have gone in and say, cancel the whole thing, I'm leaving. But because I had her in the car, I wasn't going to leave her alone. And so I waited and waited. It was almost 15 minutes that I sat in the car and waited. And this is 15 minutes past the time it was supposed to be ready. And it wasn't acknowledged that I was even there. Um, the gentleman finally came out with it, with my order, and apologized for the delay. And I wished him a better day. Because I'm sure he was getting it from... But he, he was still pleasant with me, and he had a smile on his face, and he was courteous, and and so I wished him a good day, a better day, because he knew he wasn't having a good day. It was cold and rainy, and the parking lot was full of people waiting because we're under, you know, um, there's no inside dining or anything anywhere, and, you know, I felt for him. I mean... It was either the cat or that was the dog. I think it was the dog because he seemed kind of high. But I only caught a glimpse. Anyway, so that was our fun for the day. I got to talk to my sister. Um, I should probably get rid of some of this other stuff that I'm not using. Okay, let's get rid of this. I'm almost afraid to. 
Oh, wait a minute. Do I, all I have to do is close the eye? Let's see. Let's see. Nope. Wasn't that one. Ha 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 ha. I'm learning. That was that one. What's this one? Okay. Why does that look different? Well, we got to transition it. There, now it looks different. But I don't know why. So, the double thing went away. That's why. Okay, progress. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so then my sister called and we were talking and she was making me laugh and I was making her laugh and, and that's important. That's important things to do is make each other laugh. Uh, let's see, what does this one do? I think I have to highlight it first. And... Um, it's important to talk to somebody once in a while, you know, if you're, you know, I, I, uh, basically live alone except for my critters and, um, you know, you get to the, you, you, you can cause a few issues, you know. Uh, so you need to, so, you know, if, if somebody's not contacting you, you need to contact other people. Okay, don't, don't leave it all on somebody else. Um, because your, your mental stability uh, is, is dependent on that. Okay, we're getting rid of that. Um don't make it rely on somebody, you know, you, you've got to take things into your own hands to a degree. Let's see what this does. I may have to leave it like that for now. Because it's just too busy the other way. So if I do that... I think this was, nope, not that, nope, not that. I mean, the other stuff is still around. I haven't deleted it yet because I don't know, don't know what the heck I'm doing. Did you get that idea? Here we go. Um, you know, you, you got to take the power into your own hands. You've, you've got to do your own thing. You know, you, you can't always rely on other people to do it for you. And I know you're not supposed to touch your hands and face and stuff. But I'm home. I think I wash my hands since I've been home. And didn't really touch anybody. Not really, anyway. So part of what I wanted to talk about is... Um, has to do with the with the virus and everything that we're going through. Yes, it's tricky. Yes, it's no fun. Um, but here's the thing. It's just like when you were a kid and you uh, it's just like when you were a kid and you um wanted to do something that was harmful for you and your uh, parents would tell you no. If you had good parents, they'd tell you no. I remember my oldest boy, you know, he, he would turn on the fire on the gas stove, on the burner, the top burner, and he, and he would turn on, he'd watch, he's always been fascinated by fire, always. Scared the living daylights out of me, how fascinated he was. And so I, 
you know, I kept telling him, no, you're going to burn yourself. Don't do that. And I'd put his hand up there so he could feel the warmth of it. He kept doing it and kept doing it. And finally, you know, I, I put his hand real close to the fire so he could feel it. Well, he stopped doing it when I was around anyway. He then went on to finding matches and burning things up in a sink. At least he was being protect, you know, not just plain setting things on fire. Okay, that's my boy, the little pyromaniac. Anyway, you know, it's like, you know, I kept telling him, no, that's, you're going to, you can't do that. You're going to get hurt. And just like any kid, you know, he would still, t can I, can I do it now? Can I do it now? Can I still, is it still no? Is it still no? Um, they're constantly testing boundaries. Well, in this situation, we're all, yes, to a degree, we're being treated like children. We are told, you know, don't do this, don't do that, and don't do that. And there's, and, but they tell you why. And as an adult, you've got the common sense and the know-how to understand why. You have a choice. This is your choice. Run around, do whatever you want to do, don't pay any attention to anybody, or be gasping for breath because you've got the virus and it's affected your lungs. That's your choice. And I just think people are just... Yes, it's frustrating, it's aggravating, you feel cooped up, you feel confined. That's all understandable. But there's a reason, a logical, common sense reason for it. And we are getting to the other side of it now. We're close. We're very close. If we blow it now, we're going to be going back to step one. So, in my humble, biased opinion, you know, just, just hang in there. You know, you, you've got your wits about you, for the most part. Um, so you find other ways to entertain yourself. You find other things to do. Okay, good opportunity to read those books you've been wanting to read. Good opportunity to sit down and start painting like you've been wanting to do. Good opportunity to fish that fish, finish that knitting project. You know, take advantage of what the situation is. Okay. These are my boundaries. I can't do this, 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 and this. What can I do? Oh, well, I can do this, 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 and this. So what right now you don't have 100% control over what goes on? Do we really ever have 100% control? We don't. I want to fly, but I don't have wings yet. You know? My sister wants to be a ninja. We were talking on the phone, and my sister's funny. She comes across as this, this, uh, this grumpy, curmudgeon-y, uh, old school. Um, you know, kids were afraid of her. That's because she didn't put up with shit. Nonsense, I mean. Um, neither did my mom. So, of course, we've got a streak of that in us. But we've also got common sense. You know, there's a lot of people, and one reason why they're bucking the system now is they were never told no. They don't know how to deal with being told no. You're not doing your children any favors when you raise them and never tell them no. You know, granted, some people um, tell them no all the time. You need to you need to balance between the, the two extremes. And yeah, you tell them no. Well, you can't do this right now because help them to understand why it's no. And nine times out of ten, they'll understand, except when they're pyromaniacs and they want to. Watch fire. Oh, I often wondered who was going to survive, them or me. Because I had boys. I was raised with girls. It was my mom and my two sisters and I. What are these creatures? 
they're called boys and men. Um, scary, very scary. So here I am trying to raise boys when I don't, I don't have a clue, you know. They say I did okay. I guess that's all that matters. They're decent human beings, and that's the most important thing. Um, they're good kids. They've got, they've got a hearts of gold. I mean, they, it, hands down, if I called them in, you know, in an emergency, just like that, they'd be here. Uh, they go, oh, ma, you know, but they'd be here. You know, they, they've had to do that twice now. Um, once when my sister died, um, my one son was in Kentucky, I think. My other son was in in transit from California. He was eventually going to, he was in the Navy. He was in between duty stations. And he was going to stop someplace else on his way home. But when I called him, I said, you know, basically I was just saying, send up, send up a prayer for Judy, your Aunt Judy. She died. And uh, they were here within hours, within hours. Um and help me through the process. And then when Fuzzy Butt Tramp, when he passed unexpectedly, uh, they were they, they were all here. We, we sat out in the back and told stories about him and other things. Um, but they were all here, just like that. N no ifs, ands, or buts, no, uh, no hesitation. You may miss having them around constantly or as often as you want, or you may miss the control of being able to, to mold their environment to keep them safe and protected, but you're still not doing them any favors because they have to learn how to do things for themselves. And if you're the one always doing it, they don't, they don't stretch that muscle. They don't learn how to do it. So you're, you're not doing them any favors. So when things like this that are really out of their control happen, they don't know how to deal with it. it, it to me, it's just plain common sense. But, you know, that's me. <laughs> you know, what can I say? Um, I was going to do something, uh, share some interesting things I found on on uh, on my Twitter feed, but I don't know. I'm not really feeling it today. But I wanted to stop by and see see what else I could do. So I don't know. What do you think of this setup? Uh, kind of looks neat. Kind of looks like there's a window behind me and it's sunset. It's actually sunrise. These are sunrises. Because it's the dawning, you know. So, oh, that's what I can do. When I fade out, go back to... Uh, hmm. Which one would it be? Would be... No. I can turn the microphone off. <laughs> it's not going to do anybody any good. I don't know. Someday I'll get the hang of this. Oh, it's over there that I do it. There. Okay. All right. I'm set for for saying goodbye. Um. Yeah. It. it I just basically wanted to touch base about you know uh, all the stuff that's going on now and how frustrated people are getting and it's like just just hang in there. You know, we're almost there. Uh, the light's on the horizon. You know, it's it's coming up. Uh, two to four weeks. That's what I say. And and that's just with a gradual release that I think is going to happen. But we got to do it smartly or we're going to end up back at square one 
or in the hospital because this thing can flare up again. And personally, my opinion about this thing, this pandemic, I will share two views. Sorry, my foot's falling asleep. One view is that it was manufactured deliberately and it was formulated in such a way as to take out us old folk um, because we're the ones susceptible, not the young folk. It's usually the young folk who don't have the immunities built up in their systems yet that come down with this stuff. So, it was formulated against us old folk. It was formulated with some racial, uh, what's the word? Discrimination in there. That's not the right word, but it's close. To target certain eth ethnicities. I used to be able to talk. Um, and hence, I feel the same people who set this up, who are of the uh, mentality of depopulating the earth, uh, already have a vaccine set up and ready and rearing to go. You, my body, my choice, to quote Sloan Bella, who I've been watching lately. No, I will not knowingly take a vaccine that the globalist and uh, the population control people want me to take because it's loaded with crap. Uh, microchips, uh, other goodies. Um, I used to try to figure out why people are so, so against vaccines. We need vaccines. Okay, I'm 68. I come from way back when, when they weren't doing this crap, as far as I know, to vaccines. And they, it was, you know, this is of a benefit. We know this could kill you and we have a vaccine for it. And so therefore we're going to give you this shot. It will help your body build antibodies, antibodies to, to um, fight it if you come in, 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 if you get the virus. Chicken pox, uh, measles, rubella. Well, that's kind of the same thing. One, one is measles, one is the German measles. And I came down with, I think it's the German measles that's worse and leaves a lot of scarring. Ding, 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 ding. Um, And mumps. And I was talking to my sister today and we were talking about the polio and smallpox. And I guess it's a smallpox one that would leave the scar. Well, I was vaccinated with it and so was my sister. Neither one of us have scars. And, so, you know, we, I know for sure she, she had it more than once because I guess they didn't, uh, my dad was in the army and when they would go from one station to another, if you interrupted, you know, how your uh, vaccinations were going, you had to start all over again. And maybe it wasn't written down good to prove that, yeah, when we were at the other station, uh, you know, the kids got it. So anyway, um, I believe my sister and I have some natural immunities because, you know, we never had that severe reaction to it. To the shot so you know i was coming at it from you know huh i don't understand well then i've been seeing and reading and and listening to a lot of other other things and and realizing you know people have been screwing around where they had no business screwing around you know i'm tired of of these people who think you know well i think it should be this way and this is how we're going to do it whether you like it or not No. So when it comes to, you know, a vaccine against this, I don't know if I, if, if 
I may have to buck the system because I don't trust it. I don't trust the vaccines. If it's one that somebody personally oversaw it and could verify without a doubt, there's nothing else in it that can lead to other problems. Uh, like some say that some of the vaccines that were given in the 80s and 90s actually had, I don't know if it was AIDS that was in it, HIV, or if it was a predisposition uh, to cancer, to various forms of cancer, I don't know. But the more I've been seeing and understanding and realizing lately, the more I see and understand and realize that there's a lot of nasty folk out there who are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. So, anywho. Looks like I should be going like this. Still working on it. Still trying to figure it out. Which I will try to do. Well, anyway, so that's me. I think this was done to us on purpose. And if that's true, I pray that the truth of it comes out and we see things for what they really were. And until I'm double, triple, quadruple assured that the vaccine that they do come up with in a couple years, not the one that's ready to go, you won't, that can stay far away from me. Um, once I'm assured that it's decent, then maybe I'll take it. I don't know. We'll see. But like Stone Bella says, you know, my body, my choice. You know, I get to choose what goes in my body. And I, I have to agree with her. Okay, so that's really all that I have to say today. Aren't you happy you stopped by? So I will leave it at that, and I hope you're having a good day. I hope you got to at least go out in your backyard, uh, walk your pets if, uh, if you have pets. If you don't have pets, consider adopting. Everybody needs a hug, including the animals. Um, say a prayer for everybody if you could, if you would please, um, that this ends soon and that everybody comes out on the other side happier, stronger, um, healthier, wealthier, brighter, cheerier, more blessings anyway. So speaking of that, um, I will say uh, goodbye for now. Until the next time, you take care and God bless. Bye-bye.